coming back to the notion of I've made a low-budget independent film that in some ways is maybe a bit challenged. Maybe it's not got a great cast. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's got other problems. I've but chosen... You have made those films. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've chosen to self-distribute. Yes. Do you think that's uh, the right thing to do in 2010? Um, I was a self-distributor. I was a filmmaker. And I was the first ever true independent producer to work with the BBC and they wouldn't allow me to have development money. I brought in a hell of a lot of cash to this. They wouldn't allow me to have development money and they wouldn't allow me to have overheads and all of that. So I was given distribution rights. So I became a self-distributor in order to earn money. And over the years, more and more people came to me. So I'm a great believer in the self-distribution -distribu route. And the problem is um, you have to bear in mind that it's it's a whole new industry again you've just spent years learning about making the film you've got to go through all that again and i never intended to become a full-time distributor and it was just because it took so long and so much money i thought god i've got to put this to use so i became a, a you know distributor full-time um but self-distribution if you've got the drive i mean that the best example was a man rang me up and he made this film for few thousand pounds and it was a kind of kung fu martial arts type film in North London and um, he it wasn't very well made at all and he was a really nice man and I, he was very pleasant to me on the phone some filmmakers can be so rude to you and so they don't know how to charm you need to you know go to finishing school really to go on a charm offensive and this man was he was so understanding and kind of humble I thought I've really got to take note of him and I watched his film and I have a pile of them a massive pile of films I've got so much else to do and um, I thought oh what a pity I don't like his crap you know it's just it's so badly made and things and I said well you know how much did it cost and I can't remember he said something like four thousand pounds and I said oh you know it's got to get that back and he said well I've gone into profit I said what do you mean and uh, he said, well, I'm, I'm actually selling it myself, and that's why I thought I would come to you. And I, I can't remember the figures now, it was so long ago. But he, he had literally sold it in the local um, petrol station and the local convenience store. He'd done a deal with them. He was selling it at five pounds a time. Probably no one was paying VAT on it. Um, he was supplying them at two pounds fifty, and he'd made something like twenty, twenty-five thousand pounds just through these small stores. And the word of mouth in this part of North London, in Tottenham, it was about gangs, and there are real gangs in Tottenham, just went like wildfire. And rather than rip it off by you know local gangs doing that or on pirating on the internet, because it was only five quid, and they would get it when they were filling up with petrol or they were buying a beer or something. They take a risk and he really sold it on being a local filmmaker. And all his actors were real local villains, you know, they were real gang members. Right. And that I thought was extraordinarily effective. And I said, don't bother with anybody like me, you're wasting your time, you're going to spend a year before you get no's. Just go and get another ten petrol stations and another ten convenience stores to do it and you've got a really good business. Right. And I, the last I heard he was making, he'd made two other films. Right. <clears throat> That's extraordinary. And it, it kind of feeds into this whole <clears throat> emerging notion of connecting with a ghettoized audience, so, you know, a smaller yeah. group of people and selling it with a much greater profit because there's no, no middleman. We're running a, a workshop, um, gosh, what's the date now? Just again looking at the uh, wall chart, 8th and 9th of May with John Rice who wrote this, this book, Think Outside the Box Office, which is a, a whole new um, way of, of thinking about it. And if you should buy this as, as an independent filmmaker, you should buy this. Don't buy the PDF, buy the book. You'll actually read the book, not the PDF. Um, but that, that, you know, that, that feels like there's a huge re uh, evolution revolution going on right now. Well, it's kind of not. I mean, the revolution is the technology, but the marketing is, it's, it's always been there. If you look back at our history, I mean, people who made, that came into the film industry when it was invented were showmen. And what they used to do, there were, there were those people, Kenton and Mitchell and Kenton, all those films were found about ten years ago in some attic. And what they used to do, they were, they were from Wigan or Bolton or somewhere, and they used to literally go around northern industrial towns filming people coming out of factory gates and filming people on the bus and doing very mundane things. Now it's a wonderful historical record for us. But what they would do, they would go and process it and they would come back two months later in that town and 
advertise it and people would go in for a halfpenny and they would go and watch it and they would go that's me that's my mum that's my dad and and they would tell everybody and they made an extraordinarily good living and all those early pioneers of films that's what they did hollywood didn't get it together you know the film industry in the united kingdom was in hebden bridge there were the bamfords making these films travelling around they were doing small 5 10 minute films which were which were filming in areas and then they were taking them themselves and they were taking over church halls and kind of pubs and things and just putting up a screen and showing them right. you know the real pioneering days and that's what we're going to back to that's what i've always found exciting in the film Right. industry is all that bollocks where we have those major studios and where it's like this when i was a kid there were two uk television channels in the country and now there are about 800 in 20 30 years time there's going to be 8 million you can get via the internet you're putting this on people you don't have to go to the bbc or itv and say please i've got this great idea for a show will you please give me some money and and wait a year for them to get back to you you just do it and on a basic level the problem is a lot of people in the film industry want to be rich they want to shag you know good looking women they want you know big cars they want that kind of american dream of that a lot of money and things if you forget that i mean you'd be miserable chasing that most people are because they never achieve it you know guy ritchie does but there are a thousand people like him in this country alone and they don't do it but if you're happy to find a small audience and if you make a small amount of money then the future is wide open for you and so it's, it's there a, to it's grab a, it's about creating a sustainable career isn't it yeah. so that you know yeah. you don't have to get forced to go work at at pizza hut or or take another job which literally removes you from the filmmaking process so it's a fantastic model really especially now we've been talking with Simon Ellie and with the advent of the Canon 5D Mark II camera 2000 pounds with the camera kit you can shoot stuff that looks extraordinary and make these on very small scale and manufacture manufacture them on a, a very small scale i did it with gone fishing you know i sold a 1000 DVDs it's it's a very exciting time <coughs> it is and and uh, there are always opportunities we're in a recession but um you know people want to be entertained in recessions you know that they, they don't go out to the cinema as much and th there's there's so many opportunities and as long as the costs are the reason so many films in this country don't make their money back is they cost too much and so it, anything you can do to bring them down so suddenly the guerrilla filmmaking when you and I were pioneers and people used to laugh at us and you know particularly the establishment and i couldn't get any of these films with broadcasters the bbc are now making them they put 30,000 pounds or whatever it is into microwave films then you know with film london they're doing films in in the north with people they're now embracing it and saying yes there's vast numbers of people that are being ignored because you can only give a certain number of people 3 million pounds to right. make a film in any one year doing it this very micro budget level you can have hundreds of people right, right. making films for you okay